Okay, changing topics now. What we want to address is what are called simple harmonic motor, mo simple harmonic motion, or oscillators or sinusoids. These models, sometimes, as I've said before, sinusoids. Sometimes we simply call them harmonic models, but simple is appropriate. Simple harmonic models or simple oscillators. Oscillators. Simple examples. Examples. If you, we've all been on a swing set before. So a swing with some mass hanging from a chain or something like that, it'll oscillate back and forth like this. Some of you have seen um, grandfather clocks or anything that oscillates back and forth. There's a certain amount of time for it to com complete a cycle, and that would be the period. That would be the period. Okay. Other things that you see, sometimes you go in a grocery store and you'll see a spring with a scale on the spring to tell you how much weight is in the basket down below. Okay, so you put some mass down here, and you've got some spring with a certain stiffness here. If you let that mass, the basket, just hang there, then that's called your equilibrium position. That's your equilibrium position. And then, if you want to have fun in the grocery store, you put your bag of potatoes on there, or apples or whatever it is, and then instead of just resting it on there, you maybe load it up and you, or drop it onto the basket. And then it's going to go what? It's going to come down here, and it's going to stretch the spring, right? This will be the low spot. It will stretch the spring, and then as it, as it responds, because the stiffness is now or the force in the spring is greater, it's going to want to pull that back up, and it's going to come rising back up, and it's going to overshoot the equilibrium spot and come back up here. You do things in life like that, bouncing up and down. Sometimes you get in an automobile on a washboard road, and the washboard's actually created by harmonic motion of the tires and suspension system of the vehicle hitting the gravel, usually going up a slope, hitting the gravel in a, in a fashion in which it actually forms a washboard pattern, ripples in the pavement, in the, in the uh, surface. That's, and then sometimes, you I don't know if you ever had that happen, and then it starts to feel really unstable, more and more and more of a shake, right? And what you're doing, you're, you're creating a situation called resonance, resonant frequency. If you ever take a wine glass, a little moisture on the rim, run your finger around it, and then you create a tone, okay? And what you're doing by that, by that motion, the friction of when the water and your finger on the rim of the glass is, is exciting what's called the natural frequency of that, that glass goblet. And the tone gets louder and louder and louder. And if you're really good, you can actually shatter the glass. Okay, reach a point. Imagine a little kid on a swing. I used to do this with our daughters, okay? <laughs> they, they come back a little bit, and I just give them just a little push right when they get back up here. Swing out a little further, come back, same amount of force. I'm not grabbing them and going like that, okay? Just a nice little push. And they, they amplify a little higher, another one until they get start squealing. Ah, <laughs> get me off of this, okay? So what you're doing there is you're, you're applying the force at the same time or in phase with the period of that oscillator. Does that make sense? You're just giving it a little bit of force, a little bit of force, but it's, you're pulsing it at the same, in the same frequency that related to that pendulum, and you can cause it to amplify until eventually you reach a point of instability. So that's, what, that's kind of the a, a physical examples of what exists in harmonic models. That kind of stuff ex happens electronically too, like feedback. 
you all, if anybody sing music with, with microphones or whatever, rock bands and stuff, and sometimes you hear feedback, and that's what's going on there too. So let's get back to the math. You know that with these kind of models, these sinusoidal models, that the sine function and the cosine function we know have a period of what? 2 pi. They have a period of 2 pi. So what you have to do, the period is then 2 pi divided by that multiplier on time. So we all know that. We've studied that before in the previous chapter. If you take the reciprocal of this, and I've mentioned this before, this, the units on this could be seconds per cycle. Seconds per cycle. If you take the reciprocal of that, you are going to get units of cycles per second. And that we call frequency, oftentimes given the letter F. Frequency. And earlier in the course, I mentioned the name of this letter omega here. That's called your angular frequency. That's different than this word, just frequency. So many cycles per second. All right, now, look at this. If we substitute the period in, the period formula in here, into this reciprocal expression, this frequency is equal to then omega over 2 pi. The reciprocal of the period is going to be omega then over 2 pi. And look at what omega is here. Omega is equal to 2 pi f. 2 pi f. So if you're taking a physics class or an electronics class or playing with kids on a swing, okay, the omega in the model that describes the displacement is equal to 2 pi f. So another way of writing the equations up here could either be a cosine model or a sine model. I'll just go ahead and write it here with a sine. We could replace the omega with 2 pi f if we knew the frequency. If we knew the frequency. If I told you something was oscillating at one cycle per second, all you'd have to do is put a 1 in right here, 1 cycle per second. Does that make sense? Playing with a kid on the swing, big sweep out and back takes 1 second. If you knew what that frequency was, all you'd have to do to figure out the displacement is to drop in a 1 right there and write this as 2 pi times time. Okay. Now you all know what these things graph as. They're just sinusoids, aren't they? And so the graph to go along with this, if I wanted to graph this cosine model right here, all we have to do is graph D as a function of time. And the amplitude is going to be A. And I'm just going to draw a cosine wave, aren't I? Everybody agree? I'm just going to draw a plain old cosine wave here. Let me go through one cycle, right? And the period is what? How am I going to label this spot right here? It's not 2 pi. What's this, what's this length of time right here? 2 pi over omega, isn't it? Isn't that 2 pi over the omega value for one cycle time? And then if I cut that in half, if I take half of this, this middle point right here would occur at pi over omega seconds. And if I cut that in half, this spot right here is going to be at pi over 2 omega. Everybody all right with the fractions there? 2 pi over, 
2 pi over omega is the period. Half of that is pi over omega. Half of the pi over omega is pi over 2 omega. Then here's 1 pi over 2 omega, 2 pi over 2 omega, 3 pi over 2 omega. And finally, 4 pi over 2 omega. which reduces back to the 2 pi over omega. Again, all I'm doing, nothing new, all I'm doing is cutting the period into quarters to do the drawing. And the other thing I need to label here is this amplitude. It's not 1 necessarily. It's going to be a value A, isn't it? Because you know cosine or sine, cosine or sine can't ever be bigger than 1, so times, times A makes this value A and this value here negative A. Let's do a problem. Let's do one like, how about number 17? Any questions first before we do a problem on this? Everybody all right? Okay. So back in the first chapter of the trig course, you know, when we did all our original sinusoid graphing. So here's a problem out of the book. Number 17 in this textbook on page 552. It gives us a model. D equals negative 3 sine of one-half times t. And it asks several questions. Describe the motion. What's the maximum displacement? from the equilibrium position, or from the resting position it call, it's called, from the resting position. C says, what's the time required for one oscillation? Time for one oscillation, and what's the frequency? What's the frequency? What I would probably do is I'd probably think about drawing a sketch. Draw a sketch. So if we're going to draw a sketch of D, the displacement as a function of time, I'm again going to simply draw a sine wave, except be careful. Thank you, Diana. That's an upside down sine wave, isn't it? Because of the negative. So we all know that. So initially, it's going to drop off in positive time towards negative values, and then it's going to rise up towards positive values to finish its cycle. So make sure you draw an upside down sine wave, and then label the amplitude appropriately, negative 3 rising as high as positive 3. Feel OK? Now, you could memorize the formula that says the period is 2 pi over this 1 half, right? And easily get the period. But let me just for practice run through another way that I've shown you previously on doing that. We could say that the whole angle, and we'll finish, I'll finish describing the motion here in a minute. Um, we could take this whole angle. Isn't everybody agree that this inside the sine function here could be thought of as an angle, the half times t? Okay. 
So we could take that whole angle and we could set that equal to the value that we know a sine function finishes a period in, which would be 2 pi, right? Which is 2 pi. So we take the whole angle and set it equal to the period of the trig function that we're studying here, or analyzing. Now that means that this t is going to become the value in time where the thing finishes a cycle. Does that make sense to everyone? So I'm going to put a little subscript, meaning that this is the ending point in time. So I now solve that, and the ending point in time is going to be equal to 4 pi. Now this model, I don't know if they gave us units on it. Yes, meters and seconds. So this is in meters, and this is in seconds. So that means the period, this is the period, isn't it? The time to finish a cycle? Time to finish a cycle is a little more than 12 seconds, right? A little more than 12 seconds. That turns out to be the period. The ending value of time up here on this model. So that value is 4 pi. If you cut that in half, you get the middle node, 2 pi. And you take half of that and you get pi. So to finish a quarter cycle, this thing takes over 3 seconds. Very slow oscillator. Very slow oscillator more than three seconds to get to its bottom point. Very big, long pendulum. Edgar Allan Poe, pit in the pendulum. Big, sweeping pendulum, OK? All right. Describe the motion. How would you write a paragraph describing the motion? Begins at the origin, goes down to negative three, maxes out at three, and the period is four pi. Okay, that's reasonable. Okay, let's say I had a big bungee cord and a really high bridge. Okay, and what do you do? Jump off. <laughs> you dive off, right? Some people do. <laughs> okay, dive off, right? And you go down to where. Normally, if you were just, actually, you could just, couldn't you lower yourself down and just, that's probably what I'd do. I'd just sort of climb down the rope until, or the bungee cord until I'm just kind of hanging there in equilibrium, right? Okay. So here's your trig instructor <laughs> hanging down here on the bungee cord, hanging on, okay, right there. That would be the equilibrium position, right? Equilibrium position. Well, that's kind of boring, and you folks are up here at the top, so you might grab hold of that thing and say, oh, let's, let's see what can happen. So you might pull it up maybe 30 meters, right? Pull it up 30 meters and then let it go, right? So, and the reality is that wouldn't model this, would it? What would you have to do instead? Somehow grab hold of me pull me down 30 meters, right? Pull me down here 30 meters, right? Negative 30. And then let me go. And where am I going to go? I'm going to go back up past the equilibrium position, right? Up to about 30 meters above. And then come zooming back down. Where am I going to be going the fastest? You, you pulled me down here and held on, and I'm going, oh, that's okay. I don't mind that. And then you let go. Right, right as you pass equilibrium, and yeah, then you exactly. start slowing down as you reach the max. Right, good. You all, how it feels to fly in the air. Yeah, you've all played that game enough to know, okay, you're going to go fastest, or I'm going to go fastest right there. And then I'm going to slow down because of gravity, gravitational yeah. effects, and also giving up energy that's in the spring. And it's going to come to rest right up here. 
And then I'm going to start falling again under the action of gravity and the stretching of the cord. And I'm going to come down again going fastest here and then be slowing down because of the compression or the, the tension that's existing, the additional tension that exists in the bungee cord. It slows you down. Okay? So that's the dynamics that exist in that kind of situation. Back and forth, back and forth. What's the maximum displacement from the resting position? In this model, it's not 30. It's, you know, that's not degrees either. It's 3, isn't it? So the answer to this is 3 meters. I just made it 30 to make it more interesting. The time for one oscillation? 12 seconds. No. I thought you said it was 4, four pi. Yeah, 4 pi. <laughs> <laughs> I said roughly 12 seconds. Okay. Right? It's exact. We want to be a little more precise here. So the period, the time for one oscillation, is going to be 4 pi seconds. Make sure you put your units on it. And then the frequency is the reciprocal of the period. So the frequency is 1 over the period, and so we're going to take the reciprocal of 4 pi, and that's going to be cycles, cycles per second. Roughly, roughly 1 twelfth of the cycle per second. Okay, that's a simple harmonic oscillator. That's how you do them. They're not any tougher. They, well, they get a lot tougher. Okay, a lot more interesting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to we'll stop this segment, and then in the last segment today, we'll talk about ones that get a little more exciting. Okay. Uh,